Well, let's circle back to Mirrors a little bit. Um, obviously, it was the first single that had come out, and it had, um, well, for me personally, it had an impact right away, and I think it did for a lot of people. And you, you kind of followed that up. You made a video um, called, uh, it's a long one, but it's worth it, uh, just the other day. And it kind of ties in with that that theme, which you, know, you kind of talk a lot about, which I think is great because we, we need it. And that's just like mental health for men specifically you know and i think that kind of music is important some people might think it's just shit talking angry music but for someone like me that grew up in the culture that we grew up in right that that's that's how i can release shit like it's like your song kalanapin does the same shit for me like like dog i used to turn that song on like uh, when life is just kicking my ass, you know what I mean? And I, and I could just feel it and I it'd get that. It's like, it was like a tea kettle, just easing the pressure a bit, feeling the music, you know, and, and mirrors do the same thing. So what do you think about the stigma that we have? Like, I feel we got to find a balance as men where we, we can talk about our emotions, right? And we can talk about depression or anxiety, but at the same time, we can't, we're men. We can't let our lives be ruled by this shit. We can't be breaking down in tears all the time. So we have to walk this line of, of being masculine and being a man, but recognizing Im your emotions and the fucking importance of being able to talk about them sometime, right? Yeah, I agree. And I'll say this. My son asked me years ago when he was still in high school, he said, Dad, why don't you ever cry? And I said, well, what's there to cry about? And that was probably the wrong answer at the time because it was my young son in high school that probably needed more mental help and, and maybe heart and emotional help. And I just shrugged it off. Like what's there to cry about, you know, like work harder because that's where the era we came from. The parents that yeah. raised us were hard asses. Um, yeah. I, mean, I told you, my son, huh? I was gonna say you you probably grew up the same way I did, which is basically as a man, you, you take all that 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 shit you feel you just shove that down inside yeah, in a tight little ball and you put it away. Yeah, you hold it in and then you end up going and and, and to yeah. the bar drinking and fighting people. But um now I tell my son, Hey, it's okay to cry. I I ha I'm fucked up. A man cries. A, a man should cry, be able to cry. Facts, yeah. Um and I'm I'm able to nowadays, especially after having my daughter. Um, mm. I don't make it a habit. It's very rare, but if it yeah. happens, I'll go find a corner away from everyone and I'll let one out. Uh, it's like it's a fart. <laughs> <laughs> I put that one out. Uh, it's often secret, yeah. Yeah, but um, I I'll say this: my friends, who are my brothers, who I would do anything for, I'm no I normalize it. That I tell them I love them before I get off the phone. I love you, bro. I love yes. not I love you. Love you. I love you. Like I love you, dog. I'll talk to you later. I love you too. And I notice now, after a year of this, they're saying I love you back. And that's that should be normalized. Not I love you, bro. No homo. You know, like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. no, I love you, dog. Like what, there's nothing wrong. I love the real motherfuckers that are my friends that I know that if I called right now, they'd be at my house. When I hang up the phone with them. Like me and Dean Jones, that's that's my best friend. Th that's not my blood. My brother Danny is my best friend. That's not my blood. Is Demon Jones? I get off the phone with him. He'll either tell me I love you, I love you too. We hang up. That should be normal. That is to me now in my life is normal. Um, a lot of time I didn't know what love is. I didn't know what emotion, how to handle my emotion. So the only thing I knew was anger. That's how I respond mm -hmm. to everything was with anger. Um, I'm learning and I'll be learning for a very long time here. <laughs> Slow learner here. Uh, but yeah, that's how I feel about crying emotion, men. And, you know, yo, we don't need a bunch of cry babies, but we also do need to handle uh, our emotions, you know, and, and not ignore them because it does affect us and hurt us later in life. Mm -hmm. It's interesting you say that about you know, your, your circle and saying the I love you words, you know, to other men in that in that tight circle, because 
literally started doing the exact same thing here at the in mid 2020 you know um in my little core group like the first one of us that was still alive you know that, that made it out like he i have to be careful what i say it's going to need to be unalived himself while in the throes of dt detoxing as a lifelong alcoholic he got left alone the people that were with him left him by himself with a gun he was hallucinating you know it wasn't like he was depressed and went all this like it just came out of the blue and, and it shook us all so bad that we all started saying that to each other or we never had before, you know, we're friends for 30 years. I never said, I love you to this dude. And, I'm, and that, that type group, we literally on the phone, that's, we're doing the same shit. You know, I love you brother. Like, cause it is yeah. important to get that out. And now we just lost another one. And it's just me and this other dude, Jerry. And, and, and that, that's, we end up recall that way, you know, it's like, cause we are family and it's such a small gesture, but shit like that carries importance, you know? Yeah, I can see it in your face and in your lips and how you're moving your mouth and you're like you're almost kind of holding back a little bit. Emotionally. I'm all fucked up right now, dude. Yeah. I'm I'm not gonna pretend I'm not. I mean, I don't know. You know what I mean? I have moments where I'm good, like like we're doing this. I'm so happy to be doing this right now. You know what I mean? But my, my mental health is in the toilet. Like, and I don't know how to fix it at the moment. Because like you, I've been. The first thing we got to do is recognize there's a problem, right? And, the, and then you work on growing and becoming a better person. Like, I've been doing that since I was a little gangster and I had a daughter. And it was like, oh, shit, I can't do this anymore, you know? And, but I, I don't know. I don't know. 2020 came along and fucked my world up, like everybody's. But, you know, and then it's just been one thing after another. So now with, with Jason dying, I, I don't know. I don't know. It's fucked up. But things like your music help. And, and, and that's that's for real. I mean, there's not much else in the world you, you, you can seize on other than things like that that help resonate with your emotions. Right. Because you, people can't say shit to really make you feel better. You just got to learn to deal with it on your own. And things like music can come through and help you learn to deal with that. Right. I agree. And I'm sorry to hear about your friends. I mean. That's not easy when you lose anyone in your life, especially people that you're close to. Um, and I agree with music. Um, it'll change your mu mood. It'll make your mood. It'll, 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 you can remember where you were in certain parts of your life and you heard a song that really stuck on you. Yeah. You know? Okay. You can, you can remember h how you were. I mean, music is, is a gigantic part of, I believe, I would like to say everyone's life. I mean, you go to a, a wedding, they're playing their song. You go to, you know, every single celebration in life, there's a music. There's music. Yeah, yeah. You know? That's why MC is like master of ceremony. So any celebration or ceremony, there's even in church, there's organs, there's there's science, there's hymns, there's it's music is is life. You know. Absolutely. Well. Thank you for making the music that you do for real. Those songs like that make a difference. And making those videos like that can't be easy making the videos like the, uh, the it's a long one, but it's worth it video. Like I did one of those once on my channel just talking about depression and I'm dude, I was scared as hell to release it. And I don't know, like 500 people saw it, you know. You know, I'm at the point in my career now where I'm just going to show everyone everything because I feel like people only think one thing of me. They think angry tough guy shit right like yeah. it's not about being a tough guy yeah i'm a tough guy but i can show up anywhere at any time and get my ass beat but i'm going to show up it's that's the part of me it's i don't think i'm going to beat everyone's ass i'm just going to show up well, yeah you're going to have to beat my ass and that's fine if you do that's just how we were that's raised life. You know, yeah yeah so that's, that's that up. part the tough guy part i don't think i'm a tough guy I, I am a tough guy because i'll show up but that doesn't mean i'm going to win every fight that's right. number one. Number two, people see the aggressive side of me. That's one side of me. Uh, that's my music's very aggressive. A lot of people like listening to it in the gym. And, and you know, like, I feel like people, that's the kind of music you listen to when you're riding to a fight. Like, you're about to go get into a fight, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but there's, I'm about to start showing people everything, man. My whole, my whole, I'm at the point in my career, my age, where, okay, you think I'm this and this. I'm going to show you what I really am, everything. And and maybe maybe that'll show a more human side of me, and maybe some people might not like it and think it's too soft, or maybe some people respect it and think, wow, this guy at least showed us everything, you know, like can't yeah. hide anything, you know. I think people who respected it, at least the real fans, will. I mean, it's not like it's brand new in hip hop, you know. Look, look 
like ghetto boys mind playing tricks on me is a song basically about depression and anxiety and hallucinating and fucking you up and yeah get, scarface talked about that shit a lot um um the world is yours album just shit, shit like that you know um and it's good you're doing it today that was the first thing that really got me thinking about it was when tyson fury made his comeback um i was like four or five years ago or whatever from being you know such a wreck and he was talking about trying to kill himself he was talking about like how fucked up he was in the head and how he had to get his shit together and i was like oh wow this this big tough motherfucker is out here talking about his emotions and depression and all and it it just kind of opened the door i thought a lot of ufc fighters started you know sharing that kind of shit and i just think as men that's that's a great thing for us to do so yeah let's close yeah go ahead well, that's what I think. Instead of shoving pills, I mean, I, and I and I have Fuck a song about Klonopin, and I and I do, I am prescribed to that. But instead of instead of that, maybe we could get further and normalize having us being able to talk about the shit and get past it, knowing that we're not alone. You know, and instead of just yeah, shoving yeah. these pills down my throat. But you know, yeah. Go ahead. What were you saying? So you had a birthday, what, September 5th, just a week 44. ago? Right now? 44. 44. Shit. And you just had another son born, William, right? Was that back in now, LC March? William, yeah, LC yeah. William Calhoun. Uh, he's five months old. He's, he's, a, he's a, such a handsome, like, well-behaved little boy. Uh, and my daughter is an absolute uh, beautiful little terrorist <laughs> she's she's she runs the house she's crazy she's like three right and she knows she's yeah. very smart very aware of everything and very unafraid of so much she's just she's so she changed my life i love her so much and my son Taman, uh he's 24 now he's still at the house and i'm not in any hurry for him to get out of the house but uh because you know i was kind of kicked out of my house at a young age you know when i was 18 but yeah, yeah. These are my kids. They're my responsibility to get them ready for the world, especially the fucking world we live in now, you know? Yeah. And as you know, I, I can speak to that too. I'm a parent as well. And it's important to break the cycle, you know, like uh, as a parent, that's, that's a real important thing. Most and I, I was able to do that with my daughter. And, and it already sounds like you're doing the same. And you managed to rebuild the relationship with Tamin. I mean, you've talked about that a lot on the internet. That's how I know what I know. But um, what was that like when you first found out you were having a daughter? Because I, uh, I know, I know. So I'm just curious. Maybe I'll post a picture. I had, t- I had a tear in my eye, and all my friends were laughing and pointing at me because we had a big gender reveal, you know. Oh, you did? Okay, okay. And I knew I was having a boy. I knew it. Like I knew. In my soul, I was having a boy. Of course. And my brother Patrick, he like spiked the football and the pink shit came out. <laughs> and I, I had a little bit of a breakdown because I was like, I can't, I'm not, I'm not capable of raising a girl. I'm, I'm a, I'm this, you know, hard exterior, like kind of very hard on my son Taman, very tough, yeah. uh, uh, militant parent. Uh, there's no way. And I tell you, when she was born, I felt like I had a giant weight lifted off of my chest and just made me feel, it made me feel for the first time in my entire life at 41 years old, I finally felt actual love, real love. Like, not yeah, just like, yeah. oh, I love you. Like, love. Oh, I know what love is now. After all, oh, yeah. this is what real love is. It's a fucking totally different thing, huh? Yeah, and it taught me how to love people better. Yeah. Yeah, my daughter made me a whole better person, man. Like, completely, completely a better person. She's nothing but a blessing. Yeah, same. Clothing company. I've been wanting to ask you about that for a while. Um, How is it going overall? I mean, running a small business is never easy. I've been an entrepreneur basically my whole life, various businesses. So I, I got a little bit of the flavor for it. This economy is shitty. How have things been going? So we've, over the last six years, averaged about three to three and a half million a year of uh, gross. Yeah. I have made that much money. Yeah. Uh, and people are probably going to think I'm 
lying, I don't have a reason to lie. What? No, no, that's I'm sure that's facts. If you don't, if you've never run a business before, they just don't know. I have made zero pennies off of that uh, business, um, but there's been guys that have worked for me for six, seven years now that have made a good living and have insurance and 401ks and stuff like that. And yeah. um, the reason why I haven't made money off of the company is because number one, all of our stuff is 100% made in America. So the profit margin mm -hmm. automatically goes very small. Oh yeah. Uh, everything we do is in house printed in house, everything. Um, and everything that we've made, we put back into the company to make it bigger um, and make it to like a brand. Um, I'll put it like this real quick. I don't want to get too in depth with this. Uh, sure, a sure. good company uh, that's running very good, that's established like Nike, uh, they will make about seven to 10% profit for the mm. year. So a couple billion, say they make 10 billion, they're going to make about seven to 10% in revenue, like net. Mm. Um, ours is cut down because we're paying way higher for our cloth even what i'm wearing this is this is an, an made in america 100 percent. the cotton is grown here it's harvested here it's yeah. stitched dyed put together assembled it's all here and we pay out the ass for that and that's why there's these companies aren't making made in america shit and that's why the company that's why jobs have been sent overseas it's, it's mm -hmm. it, they make it unaffordable and it's just not realistic and that's why these companies use slave labor, sweatshops, and and because they make a to make their profit. Fine. Um, and that's something that I think I might close down uh, here, probably by the end of the year, and start something else. Um, that I I used to love it and enjoy it so much, but again, it's just something that I lost the love for. Um, and I'd like to do something else. Sure. Yeah. How are you feeling about uh, the election as we're coming into the end of the year? You know, we had all this fucking nonsense with Biden getting kicked out and this ridiculous woman in her place. I mean, you can tell which way I'm voting. I know which way you're voting. I mean, yeah, I, I don't know how I, anybody I think, with a brain would vote any other way, but. <laughs> I think it's so extreme now. Yeah. It's like if you have a different opinion than someone. You can't get along, but that, but that's not true because I, I know people that have different opinions than me that I get along. The problem is when you have these extreme different opinions, that's when you don't get along. Like, mm -hmm. like extreme. I'm not, I'm not for the ex extreme left or extreme right. Like if you're right. just a in the middle person, you lean a little right and you lean a little left. I'm cool with that. Yeah. But with these extreme shit that they're trying to do with with children, um with the border and whoever the fuck's coming across that for like, hello, like, why aren't we fixing that for the, yeah. for the shit? They, they're not helping any of the veterans the way they should. They're giving these illegals, uh, housing and money and free healthcare. What about our veterans? You know, mm -hmm. like they're, they're, they're really doing a good job of fucking this country up. And I don't know how you can vote for that I don't either it's so yeah. extreme it's not even a policy difference it's it's insanity on one side and how, how do you how do you argue with someone who who thinks there's no problem there so I think these people want oh everyone well here's another thing then there's another part of me that's like well wait does our vote even really fucking matter anymore or did it ever yeah. Yeah. and then there's another part of me that's like Whoever I just voted for, they re do they really care about me? Do they are they really for the American people? Are they really for? We'll never know. But here's what I know: if we don't fix this country, or everyone comes to this country to find freedom, to find a second chance at life, we're not going to be a, we're going to be a country in ruins, and we're going to be looking for another place to go if we don't fucking get this shit steering in the right direction. You know? 
Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of uh, a hype every election where people talk about how important it is. But actually, this time, I think the hype is real. I mean, we've there got two drastically different visions. They never do anything. They never yeah. they say what they're going to do because it sounds good. It's easy to say the shit, but we need to start doing it, you know, and maybe we the people we are the we are the majority. Absolutely. What is it, a couple thousand rich ass uh, politicians? Fuck them. Our government. Mm-hmm. I'm not, people need to understand me. I'm not for our government. I'm for oh, facts, yeah. the American people and for, I love this country. These people that are running this country, they're not doing anything in our best, uh, for us anything in our yeah. best, uh, what's the word? Our best interest, yeah. Yeah, they're not doing shit in our best interest. They're doing shit in their best interest. Oh, absolutely. But I, I believe that Trump is the right. I there's something in here that and in here that believes this guy actually probably wants us to be better. That's what I feel I too. I believe it. Yeah. I believe it. I do too. I, I think it's genuine. He doesn't have to be doing what he's doing, and he's out there doing it anyways. And there's so oh, much. Got shot in the head. He got he almost right. got taken out. He's not even talking about felonies. that shit anymore. It's crazy. Yeah, he's got felonies. He's got. He's, they're trying to put him in prison. They're trying to. So yeah, I'm voting for that guy because these mm-hmm. guys don't like him. That's probably the guy we need to vote for. That's the thing. All these fuckers in power doing everything that to to shut this dude up. Well, then we we need to see what's up. There's something there that's different. So I feel like you know he gets elected. We we can pull out of this nonsense and start righting the ship. You know what I mean? And, and get shit going back in the right direction again. If we don't, well, shit might get hairy. So let's keep our fingers crossed and hope it doesn't it go down to there. Hairy. Yeah. Indeed. Um, just a couple more rap related questions, man, and I'll let you go. Rap music right now, if you were to go listen to some music, are you listening to anybody new on the scene or are you listening to old school or are you just not listening to rap at all because you get kind of burned out with what you do? A little bit of everything that you just said. Uh, so like when I, it's funny when I'm in this car or truck or whatever I've been driving, people are like, do you want to, you want to, like my son will try to put, no, I want to drive in silence, which is, that's where when you, everyone, when they get in their car, it's like their escape to listen to music. You know, when I get in the car, I'm like, I don't want to listen to music. Um, Makes sense. But every once in a while, I'll just be driving and I'll be like, hold oh, no. up. And I'll pl- start playing my playlist. Um, it is, once you make music, it is, I don't really, <laughs> when you make it, First of all, when I make my music, I never listen to it again. After it's mastered, after we shoot the video, I never listen to it again. I've heard you say that before. That's interesting. And I don't know why the fuck that is, honestly. Maybe because I wrote the song 50 times and then recorded it for hours and then listened to the mixes and then listened to the, you know, and then did the video. By the time it comes out, I've already listened to it 100 times. You know what I mean? Yeah, kind of like if you wrote a book, why would you go back and read your own book a bunch, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah, facts. But the shit that I do listen to... um, I, I really fuck with Cameron. I've always loved Cameron. Um, I really like, you know, anything from Wu Tang. ODB is my like one of my favorite. You know, had such an impact on on me as a young guy. Like, I just thought it was just like, oh yeah. He's not. Listen, Older D Bastard is not the uh, dope rapper. It was just what he was doing was like I never heard anything like that before, and that like hooked me in. And uh, I really listened to like, I wouldn't say old school, but I listened. Like I like the old kind. I miss the old Kanye. Like you know, like I, I yeah, like yeah. the old Kanye. Uh, Dipset, Cameron, uh, Freddie Gibbs, uh, Benny the Butcher, Schoolboy Q. Um, uh, man, uh, old Fifty. Like not really old Fifty, just two albums from Fifty, which was Get Rich or Die Trying and The Massacre. Oh yeah, yeah. Um. I don't, I never fuck with Drake. I love Meek Mill when he first, right before he signed, all that shit he was putting on was so dope. Um, yeah, he I'm seems to a, have changed a bit since he signed. Yeah, he, I don't know what the dresses and all that shit is. Yeah, yeah he, uh, he, he, did, he did the thing, yeah. Yeah, I never really fuck with Kendrick or really a lot of West Coast rappers. But, like, I miss, like, like the old, like, you know, I always bump big, Biggie Bone. Um, oh, bone, yeah, fucking Bone. Yeah, bump fucking like do or die every once in a while uh but like what's rotating heavy in my shit is actually like led zeppelin clean and uh mm. the who and 
Van Morrison and uh, you know, like a lot of a lot of like seventies music, classic rock, Elvis. Um, you fuck with the Doors at all? You know, I never liked the Doors, and I never liked uh, Pink Floyd that much. Um, I never got into Floyd. I fuck with Jim Morrison I, I never, a bit. I never liked Jimmy. I like Hey Joe from Jimi Hendrix, but like. You know who I really like a lot, and it's and I and this is again their political views are fucked, but man, they make some great music. Is Pearl Jam? Um, oh yeah, yeah. You know I listen to a lot of the '90s grunge. I love. I miss that music. Um, but yeah, my my music taste is really basically gangster. Anything that's the most gangster ass rap you can listen to. Yeah. Classic rock, and old ass country. That's that's what I like. But like the new, I, I couldn't tell you any song by Travis Scott or I don't know who this, what this K-pop bullshit is. I don't know. Anything. Yeah, me neither. Yeah. Shit, you know. I've been fucking with some of the new guys. Like that Mexican OT is pretty dope. Yeah, I love him. I love him. Uh, yeah. yeah, he's dope. He's really dope. There's this dude named OT the Real White Boy, uh, real dope. Not a fan of Millie's. I don't like the way his voice sounds. Yeah, same, same. Uh, MGK as a human, I don't, I don't know him personally like that, but like I see how he moves. I don't really like it, but like he's been, he makes some dope. I mean, he's a dope rapper. That's I mean, you don't thing. have to like yeah. the dude who addressed that he's a dope rapper, you know? Bro, I can't stand that dude. And every time I want to hate on him, and I'll listen to like, like that BMX and he just dropped, bro. That's a fucking banger, cause like that's yeah, a song. And I, that dude's such a, up. he's such a fucking weirdo. I don't he's know, he's not my kind of person, but man, he he does make some dope tracks. Dude. Like, yeah, I mean, no even Royce, Royce the Five Nine, I buy yeah. every one of his albums, even though I think he's slick racist. Like I still oh, buy yeah, yeah. his albums. No, I I do the same, man. I I can overlook that shit. I mean, I fuck, I was listening to Public Enemy when I was in like eighth grade, little white yeah. boy. You, you know what I mean? Like like I, I rock with it. it, it it's all if good. You're a dope rapper. I'm listening. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, for sure, for sure. All right, last thing, Adam. Top 10 rappers of all time for your personal tastes. Okay, so you're asking me my my favorite rappers of all yeah, time. Yeah, who, who do you think are the best that are also your favorite? Not necessarily like, like Eminem right, might so, be okay, everybody's so favorite. This, this is in top 10 best rappers of all time. This is what I think. Yeah. My favorite people. Yeah. Okay, I got to go. How many? Let's do, let's do five each. You do five, I'll do five. Okay, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Cameron, 50, ODB, old Kanye, And I'm gonna go with these two both get a spot, Black Rob and Schoolboy Q. Mm, nice. All right. For me, I'm gonna have to put it number one in this personal list here. Uh Scarface from Ghetto Boys. That's a solo yeah, artist. Texas. Uh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh for two, I'll be looking at Tretch from uh Naughty by Nature. Like like I think Tretch is really underrated. Like, like, go back and listen to, like, Yoke the Joker. Fuck, man. Like, that dude's got some skills. Uh, Nas. And I'd have to throw, because I think he's the greatest, is Rakim. Rakim, uh, Rakim changed how, how, like, modern rap, how modern rap Fuck evolved. Yeah. It was a start with him. I got to throw Biggie in there, too, because without Biggie, I probably, he was a huge influence on me also. So Biggie. Yeah, it's hard for me not to have Biggie and Pac. I mean, I got them on my walls behind me. You can't see them. It's fine. I got, I got Biggie. I got Pac. I got you with a signed uh, poster I got at your Vegas show. And then I got, a, I got an original Kid Rock uh, from 2001 Cocky Tour poster from a concert I went to way nice. back then. Yeah. But, yeah. It was we'll a pleasure work. talking to you. Anytime you want to do this again, I will do it anytime. I want to have a, 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 a like a live maybe or a longer discussion and, and get the people involved. You're, you're my nope. favorite reactor. I love how much you know about Hip Hop, man. I'll, anytime you want me to be on here, I will come on here. All right, word. Well, thank you so much, man. Enjoy the rest of your day. 
looking forward to grabbing that album tomorrow. Everybody listen to make sure you reach out and grab that album. Pale Horse, Adam Calhoun, and Mises. Peace. Watch our brother.